everyone, my name is Sharon, also known as Sage Fira, and welcome back to my playthrough of I Was a Teenage Exocolonist, recorded live over on Twitch. Last time, we found ourselves victorious during the annual Vertumnalia Festival, leaving us with a touch of popularity to enjoy. Popularity may be fleeting, but surely it has its benefits. What effects could it possibly have on our life? Let's go ahead and pick back up where we left off. We are midway through the season of Dust, and we just won the Vertumnalia Festival. So let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do uh, with the rest of our time. So let's take a quick look. So popular, you're a winner and everyone wants to be your friend. We get double kudos for three months. So it might be a good time to focus on stuff that earns us kudos so yeah i think i'm gonna just i'm gonna shovel some dirt let's shovel some dirt chat let's do it you're pulling weeds from the garden beds when you see cal scurry past you moving with a purpose he doesn't even stop to say hello before he disappears into a barn let's follow him you slip into the barn behind cal he's so absorbed in whatever in whatever is in the broken storage box he doesn't hear you you can do it, he whispers. Come on, go, go, go. Oh my gosh, does he have a little animal that he saved and is keeping in a box? You creep forward, but the barn door creaks close behind you and Cal jumps. Sagefira, he says, moving between you and the box. I, uh, what do you need? What's in the box, Cal? Cal clenches his fists. Nothing, it's nothing. Whatever Cal is going to say next is interrupted by a chirping noise from the box. Cal gasps and whirls around, and you both rush forward to take a look. Inside the box is a pink caterpillar-like creature about the length of your arm, blinking up at you with big, multifaceted eyes. Its mouth parts wave at you and make a clicking, chirping noise. It hatched, Cal says. Hey, little baby, welcome to the world. Oh, Cal is a papa. He has a little baby. What is that, Cal? Dunno, Cal says. I looked it up on the Surveyor archives, but nobody's found anything about anything like it before. It's true. You have no idea what this creature is. Look, you knew about this thing? Yeah, it showed up in one of those first shipments of mushwood, he says, rubbing its little nose. Just curled up in a little cocoon. Looked like a dried up leaf, but warm. I didn't want to just throw it away in case whatever was inside was still living, and no one was using this busted up storage box, so... Oh, look at him! He's so cute! Oh, look how cute it is! It's like a little bunny! Cal puts a small creature on his shoulder. What are you, little buddy? Cal asks. You look like a big old caterpillar, but cuter. The creature yawns, showing off circular rows of tiny, even teeth. It nestles against Cal's neck as he scratches it, under the chin. Maybe we'll call you a dilly pillar. He touches one of its six white capped feet. Socks. Socks the dilly pillar. Oh, that's adorable. I hope nobody finds out. I want you to I want you to be able to raise this little buddy. Same here, Cal says. Do you remember Mrs. Manners, the mouse we found in the stratospheric? The grown ups wouldn't let us keep her. He frowns. I wonder what happened to her in engineering. Maybe Tange knows. I have to hide her, Cal says, looking around. Think she'll be okay if I keep her in the broken storage box? He places socks gently into the box and closes the lid. Go back to sleep, little buggy wuggy, he croons. Sleep tight. Oh, I hope we get to I hope we get to raise um I hope we get to raise socks and let let them grow. They're so cute. I love them. Watch them grow into something that's gonna absolutely murder us though, like Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> okay. We love it. We absolutely love it. And there we go. Beautiful, perfect, fantastic. 13 plus 1. Two stars on that. Look at that toughness. We got five, five toughness and ten kudos. Ten kudos! So we got double the kudos from our uh, little status buff here. I love it. I love it. So we're making lots of money. So I think we're just, we're probably just going to shovel dirt for the next couple months because I feel like that's probably the best way to make use of our little buff here. Hey, best friend. How you doing? Tangent is deep in conversation with one of the other scientists. 
He seems to be consoling her, though Tangent's face portrays no emotion as he claps her on the shoulder and reassures her she's doing really well for someone so young, and that everyone compromised some of their samples when they were first learning. He leaves, and Tangent sighs as she goes to put her head in her hands, stopping short when she realizes she's still wearing gloves. She peels them off and digs her fingers into her eyes. Well, what's up, Tange? Tange grimaces. Just. Great. Well, I compromised an experiment I was working on because the vent was still open when I was spraying the workstation down with sanitizer. She sniffs. It's so gross here, she says. I probably did that fungus a favor. Tangent takes a bottle of sanitizer from under her workbench and cleans while she speaks. There are pollen spores everywhere, she whines, and he comes over here and tells me it'll be okay, Tang, like it's his job to console and patronize me. I hate being patronized, too. You both sigh in unison. I hate being young, she says bitterly. Why don't they understand that we have higher expectations for ourselves than they do? I need to learn from my own failures. What I don't need, she continues icily, is someone to pat me on the head and tell me it's okay and the adults will make it all better. I messed up, she says. Just let me fix it. Don't make it a big deal about it like I'm a child with a boo-boo. Valid. Valid, my love. Valid. Would you like a present? Will that make you feel better? Oh, too soon to give another gift. Oh, we can study together, though. We can study together. Let's go. You and Tangent sink your hollow palms and play a game together where you race to assemble chemical compounds using a simple programming language. Tangent is a whiz at it and breezes through the levels, barely breaking a sweat. You can tell she's hiding a smile when she looks over your shoulder to help you with a particularly tricky algorithm. Oh, she loves us. She loves us. We're at four stars with her. Let's go. Oof, now I need 40 reasoning to do more with her, but... It's worth it. It's worth because it's worth it to become Tangent's best friend. I am going to I am going to be her best friend if it kills me. <laughs> that being said, let's go ahead and shovel some more dirt to get our extra kudos. Um, it's not always shoveling. You sometimes get to control the huge robotic vehicle that has been fitted with a plow. The robo plow is massive and intimidating and can easily grind through rocks or even trees. But the colony only has one, so you have to be very careful when you give it instructions. You're tasked with taking a bunch of rocks out of a field and given the robo plow to do it. Cal loads up the software on his hollow palm, and there is a lot going on. All those digital gauges and a long list of possible subroutines with parameters to enter. Um, say, Shvira, he says, nervously poking at the interface. Do you want to try doing this? Mm, use our muscles instead. Or need or control the robo plow. Let's control the robo plow. Easy peasy. You give it the dimensions of the field you're plowing, the desired depth, and add a subroutine for rock removal, indicating the general size of rocks. Robo power plus uh, two duplicates when drawn. Interesting. Okay. The machine whirs and adjusts its digging tools, then sets to work. You get the field cleared in record time, and you and Cal can enjoy a half day off. That's awesome. Okay. So we need 16 at minimum. So let's do this. Hmm. So maybe we should do this. Yeah, that works for me. Super gold, 22 plus one. And we got the three stars, excellent. Our toughness is bumping on up. We're getting lots and lots of kudos, which is excellent. And we're getting friendship with Cal. What is our friendship with Cal at right now? 17, <laughs> not bad. 17 versus the 40 that I have with Tangent. But you know, considering I'm not like focusing on my friendship with him, I feel like I'm doing pretty well. Late dust. Oh, we're in the early wet season now, Oh. Time sure flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Hey, Cal. Cal is standing in the shelter of the garden shed, pulling on his boots and poncho. I love it when it rains here, he exclaims. Everything gets all muddy and slippery, and nobody says, Cal, why are you so dirty? Go take a shower. Here, Cal, I found something you might like. Have a Xeno egg. Is that an alien egg? Cal exclaims. Wow, I wonder what's inside it. If it's still warm, maybe we can hatch it. He lifts it up and scrutinizes it. 
Anemone, Anemone's always talking about wanting to eat a big ol' alien egg, he says. If this one's not fertilized, I'll give it to her. Let's go. So we found that Anemone likes red Xeno eggs. So that's actually really a really good thing to know, huh? Let's see what other dialogue we have available from our other friends here. Uh, this is the same dialogue. We could give her a Xeno egg. We know she likes it. Let's do it. Let's give her the egg and see how she reacts. Because we just found out from Cal that it's one of her liked items. Whoa, this egg- this is not her voice, oh my god. Whoa, this egg looks tasty, Anemone exclaims. Wait, I can eat this, right? Huh, I thought she would react a bit better than that. But, I guess, did we get like a bunch of bonus from her, maybe, from giving her something she likes? Ooh, actually we have dialogue now. <laughs> so then I trapped it in my room, Anemone says, telling you about the bug she saw in her quarters. Its wings were as big as my head, and had feelers like- Whoa! It's bouncing all over the place like boing, boing, boing. She gestures excitedly, swinging her arms over her head. The bugs here are so big, and they're everywhere. I was gonna give it the tange, she says. She loves gross bug stuff, but she said I should just let it go, because if it stung me, I might get weird mutant powers. I mean, other than the one I already have. And I wanted to see if, it got, if I got more weird mutant powers. So I started jumping around off higher and higher things until I was jumping off the back of the ship. And I got in so much trouble, but it wasn't even that high. She stops in her tracks. Hold on, she says, stooping to rub irritably at her knees for the probably the hundredth time in the past five minutes. Ugh, I'm gonna die. I busted up my knees and it's so itchy when my scales grow in. Annie, don't pick at your scabs. Chief Steward and Tessident's voice rings out across the garrison yard, pleasant but firm. It instantly transports you back to being in the ship crash, tugging on her skirts and calling her auntie. Anemone sw jumps and stands up straight, her hands flying to her sides. But mom, Anemone uh, whines, digging her fingers into her knees as Auntie C. Oh, her name is Antecedent, but we call her Antecedent. I get it. Oh. But mom, Anemone whines, digging her fingers into her knees as Antecedent approaches you both. It's so scratchtastically itchy. I know, lovely. Auntie Seedent soothes her, patting down her riotous red hair. But the more you pick at it, the thicker your scales are going to grow in. Anemone tucks her hands under her armpits to keep from scratching. But what if I want to have cool scales? She, she pouts. Auntie Seedent smiles indulgently. At the rate you're going, I'm sure you'll be covered in them before you, need, before you know it. No need to rush. Anemone's skin is dotted with patches of protective blue-green scales that grow in wherever she gets a cut or scrape. She rubs the patch on her jaw indignantly, the one she got when she ran headfirst into the food synthesizer back on the ship. Oh, because I was wondering what was going on there. So this is her genetic augment. So it helped her body basically helps start starts protecting her from where she gets damage. Auntie Seedon opens her satchel and pulls out a bundle of clothes. The queue for the nanoprinter is over a week long, so I patched your pants with scraps from your brother's clothing. Please, try not to put any more holes in them. For yourself, okay? She hands the clothes to Anemone and kisses her on the forehead. Anemone sticks out her tongue and gags. Yuck. Anemone evaluates the clothes as her mom walks away. Galactic, she breathes as she runs her fingers over the odd covered colored patches. Then, right in the middle of the yard, she unashamedly squirms out of her pants and pulls on the new ones. Wow, I look like a fighter jet from the hollows, she exclaims, showing off her new pants. Like when they stencil your kill count on a plane. Or like a really cool scar. Anemone grins. Yeah, you get it. My pants are scarred, just like me. She's adorable. I think, I, I think she might be my second favorite. I didn't expect it, but she's kind of adorable. But that being said, we have one more month of double kudos, um, kudos being our money. So we are going to go ahead and spend the month once again shoveling dirt um, because we're going to get um, double money from doing this as well as the skills that we gain. You're helping your mom repair the garden fence when you see Cal slip away into the barn carrying a blanket. You excuse yourself and follow him. Does he still have that weird pet bug? He does, in fact, still have that weird pet bug. Cal looks up at you and smiles, cradling socks in his arms and rocking her back and forth. The little nubs on her butt seem like they're getting longer. She must be growing. I made her a little bed in that trunk over there, he says. She mostly just likes to be curled up in the dark. She sleeps a lot. Socks chirps and Cal sits on the floor, letting her curl up in his lap. 
I've been coming in early every morning and staying late every day so she can play in the sun, he explains. That's when she's most active, but her favorite thing is laying on my lap for belly rubs. He tickles her soft tummy. Isn't that right, Socks? Who's a good dilly pillar? You are. You are. Sock trills in delight. Do you want to feed her? Cal asks. I collected a bunch of leaves for her. Here, take one. You kneel down beside them and take one of the leaves. Socks trundles from Cal's lap into your cupped hands and gingerly holds a leaf between her two front paws. She's like a tiny dinosaur caterpillar. Munch, munch, munch. Oh, oh, ouch. Socks nips at your finger. Her teeth are really, really sharp. Um, let's play it cool. It's fine. It's fine. It, it hurt a little bit, but I'm chill. I'm chill. You pretend like it doesn't hurt, but it super does hurt. You can barely keep yourself from crying as Socks munches happily at the rest of the leaf. Once she's done, Cal puts her gently back in the box. Then he notices your hand and gasps. Sichvira, you're hurt! Cal looks over your finger, which is bleeding sluggishly from the shallow puncture wounds. I learned first aid from my mom, he says. Let's just wrap it and tell people you banged it in a door, okay? He bites his lip. If people think she's dangerous, they'll take her away. She's not dangerous. It was just an accident. Cal brushes his hand over the loose dirt and straw of the barn floor. My mom says the aliens here are dangerous, he mutters. I asked, like, in theory... If I found an alien, could I keep it as a pet? But she said I can't, even if it's a nice alien because of diseases and stuff. He sighs. Socks isn't sick, he insists. And she doesn't mean to hurt anybody. Other animals probably don't either. Mm, I don't know. That's kind of... <laughs> kind of suspicious. But we are getting a card, which once again, I will move my camera out of the way so you can see. We're getting Cal's Pet Socks. Plus three on third stages of challenges. So that's actually pretty good. Like if we're able to actually get that card during the three stage challenges, that could be good. And now we are going to do our work. Oh, random card locked in one slot. That's frustrating. Oh, that's frustrating considering, look at my hand, it's all blue cards. Like, please. That's kind of infuriating to be honest. Um. So what if we do... Uh... Yeah, let's just do that. We'll just leave it like that, because if, if we put the other cards in, I feel like it's actually going to be less effective. Like, yeah, that pulled us down. Like, and if I put this here... Well, actually, if I put one here, that actually does push us up to 16. So, I mean, I, gu I guess we can just do that and just leave it like that. So that being said, I think that this is the best hand we can come up with. We are getting 16 of our 14 goal. So we win and we get two stars. So we did pretty well. And that's the last of our extra kudos because we're getting double kudos right now because we're popular since we won the uh, we, we won a competition recently. So that's doing pretty well. And with that, we are in the mid wet season. Our popularity is oh, we got a perk. Uh, toughness level one, plus one to physical cards. Red cards get plus one in physical challenges. Let's go. All right. So we're a tough, perceptive little little lass. <laughs> and now the question is, what comes next? And so we continue to learn more and more about our fellow exocolonists, from the nature of their genetic augments to secret pets. What other secrets are there? waiting to be uncovered. <laughs>